this is the only sporting ballad I ever wrote, and I, I was often tempted, coming from a great sporting county as I do, <coughs> to write something about our great sportsmen and their exploits. But uh, I decided to go for something far safer. So I, this is a sporting ballad about a fictitious event that is said to have happened in the, the town of Antioch, which is now on the border of Syria and Turkey. <coughs> about 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so all the characters are safe, well, they're not just safely dead, they never existed before. <laughs> uh, it, it, there's a nice little bit of politics and there's a, a really horrible villain and there's all the things you need. You, know? <coughs> you may chatter and sing of Mackie and Ring and the greats of the hurling game of athletes bold who compete for gold and footballers of great fame. Of a horse called Ertl who galloped and sparkled and followers hearts did stir. But the charioteer who knew no fear was the driver they called Ben Hur. <laughs> In his youth he was a force at water sports. At Olympus he swam for Rome. He excelled at rowing in a style so flowing as his boat skimmed across the foam. His career aquatic by a leg rheumatic was ended despite his fame. So he bought an old chariot from Judas Iscariot <laughs> and set out the racing game. In 32 AD it happened to be that Masala was empire champ. A scheming fiend full of bile and spleen, an unprincipled low-down tramp. At equine auctions this type obnoxious could buy any horse he pleased, for he knew that all the while it was Pontius Pilate, his sponsor, who paid the fees. <laughs> One night it did occur that he met Ben Hur in a bar in downtown Beirut. Miss Sally was rowdy and talking loudly, he bragged of his high repute. Then Ben walked up and he said, you're a pup, a despicable cheating tug, and you always come first for your nags are nursed with performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ella just quaffed from his pint and laughed, and he said to his nasty mates, I swear by Pythagoras, this sturdy little shagger is full of dancing fates. We Roman players are strong and fair, and at racing we are the best. But in the four o'clock at Antioch, your word you may truly test. So the challenge it was met, and they laid their bets, and the fixture was advertised. Centurions and majors were laying big wagers, Masala would take first prize. But even his brother wouldn't chance a little flutter on Ben Hur as an each way pick. And the racing cognoscenti declared in print he truly wouldn't do the trick. All the pubs were chock a block in Antioch in the morning of this great race. It was all sold out, and the shady touts of a ticket could find no trace. There were fast food stalls all around the walls where the customers stood in queues, and a girl called Vera from Al Jazeera conducted the interviews. Now the driver's first task was to follow the Damascus loyal volunteer pipe band. <laughs> Those Syrians and Zionists dressed in their finest were cheering from Paris and stand. In the dearest seating the Romans were eating sandwiches filled with prawns. <laughs> For they all came to the gala supporting Messala, their very own Buchel bond. With Masala and Ben, there were three more men who went to the starting line. <coughs> Some die-hard punters had money on Gunther, a hun from beyond the Rhine. <laughs> <laughs> a brave Mesopotamian whose name was Damien was seen as an also ran, and a chap called Lazarus whose driving was hazardous <laughs> to the local fans. Well, the moment they got started, both Lazarus darted like mad for the opening bend. 
With a desperate swerve, he tackled that curve, and his chariot did up end. As he lay in his gourd, there remained but four, until Damien lost the head. When his plans came all unraveled through the air, he travelled, and he landed up in Rosed. <laughs> then, dashing to the front, was the gallant Gunther, exhorting his eager steeds. Messala was chasing, his eyes were blazing, determined on evil deeds. With his big long whip, one horse he tripped, and the hun from his chariot threw. Then with his horrid smile, Ben-Hur, he riled, saying, the next one to die is you. <coughs> <coughs> so they galloped side by side, and Messala tried his rival to intimidate. He pushed right in and he crowded Ben, who shouted at him, Watch it, mate. <laughs> You're putting us in danger, you half-witted linger. Your horses and dope are high. <laughs> he knew disaster beckoned for whoever came second, so his choice was to win or die. <laughs> Through all the dust and smoke, Ben heard and spoke to his thoroughbred Broncos four. He talked of pagan invaders, plaguing his people who suffered right sore. There's no freedom to be had without another jihad. We'll strike for our liberty, and we'll free the Middle East of those greedy beasts or die in the fray, says he. So his noble horses charged, and on their barge as the enemy they cast aside. Messala was humbled, his thoroughbred stumbled, their energies all had dried. From his chariot falling, his fate was appalling, entangled in hooves and wheels. In the course of all this skirmish, his torn epidermis came off like potato peels. <laughs> <coughs> so the race was in the bag and past the checkered flag, Ben-Hur and his team came in. Those joyful Israelis were drinking rum and baileys to celebrate a noble win. The ambulance brigade were giving first aid with Messala's own backroom team, and a specialist from Babylon was rubbing on Savalon's <laughs> cream. So of those gallant riders, the only survivor was Ben in his laurel crown. For all of his rivals with ceremonies tribal were laid in the burial ground. Only Lazarus's folks complained they were broke, saying the undertaker we can't pay. For we buried him already, but instead of staying dead, he turned up for his dinner next day. 